This program contains sensitive content, which some may find disturbing and inappropriate for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, and welcome to Strategies for Strongholds. I am your host, Pastor Ron Woolsey. And today we're going to be talking about a way of escape. And our guest today is Ms. Lisa Terillion. She is one of our uh, associates in Coming Out Ministries, our mentoring associate. Lisa has been with us for about five years now, and we're just delighted to have you with us today, Lisa. Thank you so much. And we're going to really enjoy hearing your side of the story. Okay. Let's have a word of prayer. Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing Lisa to our ministry and to be able to have this discussion today to share the word of her testimony. We pray that you will bless and that uh, many people will be touched by what she has to share. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. So yes, Lisa, it's been about five years since we met uh, through the ministry, but I didn't meet you personally until I think we had a little rendezvous with you and your husband in Missouri. About a year ago, I about think. About a year ago, and we'd been working together for right. several years, and then uh, uh, I'm excited that you and Troy are moving right next door to <laughs> me because I live in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas and you are moving to the Ozark Mountains of Missouri. Right. And um, that's exciting. Amen. So uh, we, uh, we want to get right into your story today because it's really quite a testimony to the love and compassion and power of Jesus yeah. Christ. And I know you have some strategies that you can share with us and with our audience about how you overcame the strongholds of addictions in your life. So to begin with, let's just talk about a little of your background and your childhood and what led you down the path of, of homosexuality. Well, um, I was just naturally a tomboy as a child growing up and that fit in really well with uh, what my parents were wanting. When my sister was born, who's older than me, they didn't even have a girl's name picked out. And I think it was the same with, with myself. So. Um, I just kind of fit that niche being a tomboy and I began to really bond I think more with my dad than my mother and wanted to be just like him and do everything that he did so um, that was harmless enough but before I knew it um, that led me to some gender confusion mm -hmm. and um, in fact I was often mistaken as a boy even into my teenage years. Really? Mm -hmm. Why would you be mistaken? For a boy, you didn't wear your hair like this back then? <laughs> no. Um, in fact, my dad often cut our hair and us kids referred to it as the bowl cut. And it was, oh. it was very much uh, a boy haircut. And yeah, I was hauling hay at one point and the um, farmer pulled up to my uncle and he said, who's that boy helping you? And it was me. Oh so, yeah. my. I was how probably 13 you, or 14 at the time. You heard him say that? I heard him say that. And how did you feel? You know, when I was younger, it really didn't bother me, but as I got into my teen years, yeah, it stung a bit. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was aware that yeah, <laughs> something's would, wrong here. Right, I would yeah. imagine as you're developing as a woman, which would be in your teen years, right. then it might, it, it really might stick right. um, and, and prick a little bit right. that they did not notice that you were developing I was into a woman. Definitely embarrassed. Yes, wow, okay, so, um, Tell us about how you ended up going into the, the, the gay lifestyle. I mean, the, this was a teenager and they were still thinking you were a boy or, or mistaking you for a boy. Right. So where did it go from there? Well, I kept my secret for a long time. Um, the secret of what? The secret of being same-sex attracted. Oh, okay. The, the secret of being same-sex attracted. Right. But you weren't overt yet. No. Okay. I, there was an incident when I was like three years old. Mm -hmm. um, and at a sleepover, I'd taken my shirt off in front of uh, an older uh, neighborhood friend, and that was embarrassing. And, and so that situation made me not want anyone to know what was going on inside of my mind. So mm -hmm. it wasn't until my sophomore year in college. Um, and anyway, I, was, I played collegiate sports, 
and one of the one of my teammates went in front of the entire school and shared her testimony that she had overcome homosexuality that the Lord had delivered her mm -hmm. so anyway I ended up sharing with her my secret that I'd been keeping and and that's when I had my first homosexual experience she now, she said, came on to me and uh -huh. she she didn't she didn't have the deliverance she had proclaimed oh okay now you talk about collegiate sports uh, you you got to be pretty good in one particular sport right I, I my favorite sport was basketball but I also played uh, college uh, softball as well softball okay mm -hmm. because I know I've seen a pocket track of your testimony right. and the cover picture is of you, I say, quote unquote, you as a baseball player, right. softball player. Softball, yeah. Yeah, and you're pretty good at that? I was, yes, yeah. back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. All right, so this was a college acquaintance and someone on your team mm -hmm. that, uh, that you had an encounter with. And then, right. then that, I guess, did that just lead you right on into the gay life? There was a period of years there that I was kind of back and forth. I, I knew it was wrong. And so I would seek the Lord for a while and then kind of yo-yo back and forth between uh, my flesh and, and trying to um, be obedient to God. How many years did you end up living as a lesbian? Counting those years, about 15. 15, yeah. okay, 15 years. Um, where was Jesus in all of this? Because were you not raised a Christian? I was. I was baptized at age eight and I, I say I went through um, what I now consider a good person routine. I thought that's what being a Christian was, and so I was doing whatever I did, trying to be obedient in my own strength, and um, that didn't work out so well. Um, but, you know, Jesus in, in all of that time was calling to my heart, and, um, you know, he was, always, he was always right there, and I was running from that conviction, running from anything that reminded me of God, as it says in, in Romans chapter 1. But um, he was relentless in per his pursuit of me. I'm so grateful yeah, for that. I find this fascinating because I, I resonate with what you're saying because um, what, what I think you're saying is you can be a very spiritual young person or a spiritual person and still have a struggle with same-sex attractions. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because I know in, in my throughout my life. I was very spiritual. I was very involved in church, mm. but I struggled with that in my head. I didn't practice overtly. Mm -hmm. I was victimized a number of times, mm. but I was still spiritual and yet I was confused. And maybe some people don't understand that, but I think Satan targets spiritual people. Mm. Do you agree? I wouldn't doubt that. Yes, I'm, I would agree with that. <laughs> because he doesn't, uh, maybe he doesn't work so hard on those that are already in his grasp. Right. But those that are trying to yeah. follow the Lord, would you agree, are just I agree with a that. special targets? And did you ever experience any special, well, really severe struggles while you were still being spiritual? Oh, I did. At one point, you know, when I was in college, um, I had turned to the Lord. It was one of those uh, periods where I was going back the and forth back on the yo-yo. Or the fourth and back. Yeah, you know? and um, I had actually gotten engaged to a young man. And really, I think that was God's plan A for my life. But when that, when that didn't work out, I just, and I believe that was Satan that was, you know, orchestrating some events there that occurred. But um, yeah, I became discouraged and went right back into the, the lifestyle. Okay, we're talking about strategies for breaking down these strongholds of addiction and you you hit on something that I think might help uh, that might be a strategy you said that that may have been God's plan a for my life mm. um, do you think that God has a plan B and a plan C amen amen I would definitely agree with that in fact I I don't know that I should tease but sometimes I've, I've said that I think I was on triple Z um, well, I've not he gone that still, far. He I'm was still about, pursuing me. I um, go to Z and then back to double A. But okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get your point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think what we're saying here is that just recognizing that though you've messed up, mm -hmm. recognizing that God doesn't give up. What does the Bible say about a just man falls 
seven, seven times, times, but then gets back up. Right. Seven times, that's A, B, C, D, E, F, <laughs> G, at least to a plan G, right? We better go with 70 times seven. That's right, <laughs> 70 times seven. I like that a lot better because I'm sure that I'm, I, I, I probably have come close to even exceeding that yeah. throughout my life. But yeah, I think that's an important point to realize that God never gives up on you. Amen. And, and though you may have thwarted his plan A and it can never be plan A again. Right. Uh, that he has another plan B, uh, another plan, right. or another and another. And each one can be very effective, even yeah. though it wasn't his original plan. Right. Something amazing about God that he can take us wherever we have Amen. been Amen. and turn it around to his glory. Praise the Lord. And he's certainly done that in your life, hasn't Amen. he? So, For sure. Um, what was it that led you, after all of those years, into in the gay life, to accept Jesus back in again? Well, you know, people, God had been using so many circumstances and uh, to grab my attention. But at that time in my life, there was a lot of people dying around me. I was a social worker and there was a family that I'd worked pretty intimately with that they were, they were murdered, the whole family. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I lost an aunt, uh, I had a cousin diagnosed with lung cancer and so there was just a lot of death around me. And I, I really began to consider my own mortality. And, you know, knowing truth as I did being raised in church, um, I, I just had this um, epiphany, I guess, one day, like I'm exchanging this life for the next one. And I'm not even happy here, I'm miserable. What, what am That's I doing? interesting. What am I doing? That's profound. You're exchanging this life, which is miserable, Mm -hmm. I mean, you're exchanging eternal life right. for this one and, and you're miserable with it and yet you're choosing it anyway. Right. Why would you do that? Is there some bondage <laughs> involved in that? I'm telling you. I it, mean, like a stronghold? It, I, yes. And it, when you really look at it, you know, it just doesn't make sense. It, it, well, uh, it sounds like what you're saying is I chose what I didn't want. Mm -hmm. right. uh, you had unwanted same-sex attractions and yet you chose something you didn't want. Right. Can you explain yourself? <laughs> Boy, that was, th that's a, a long topic right there. But, you know, I came to a couple of wrong conclusions. Uh -huh. One was that um, God made me this way so I could just indulge in whatever mm -hmm. my flesh wanted, which was a wrong conclusion. And on the other hand, at one point I had decided that um, I'd prayed so long, the temptations didn't go away. And so somehow I was beyond God's reach. So, does God promise to take away temptation? No, He helps us to resist. Praise God! I that's, finally understand. I that. think that's another strategy that we could talk about Amen. briefly because, you know, the Apostle Paul had this thorn in the flesh, mm -hmm. and yeah. he prayed the Lord would take it away. And we could say, you know, he, we prayed that the Lord would take the gay away. Right. Who knows what Paul was praying? The Lord would take away. Right. But how did he respond? How did the Lord respond? Well, uh, I think that those thorns in the flesh, those things that we struggle with are the very things that mm -hmm. make us realize that we, need, we are sinners in need of a savior mm -hmm. and draw us to the foot of the cross. And so he doesn't just automatically take that away. He didn't for me, um, but instead he helped me to overcome right. my brokenness and to resist those temptations. Because basically he said, well, Paul, I'm not taking it away. Now that's my paraphrase. Yeah. Paul, I'm not taking that away. My grace, my strength is sufficient for you. So that's another, I really think is an important strategy to understand that, that God doesn't promise to take away temptation. Amen. If he took everything away, what would we be? Right. Wouldn't we be robots weak? And, We'd be yeah. robotic and yeah. we would be weak. He says, no, my grace, my strength is sufficient for you. And as we struggle, with those temptations and desires and tendencies, struggle makes us stronger. Right. And that's what he wants. He Amen. wants us to be strong. My strength is made perfect in weakness. That's right, exactly. He's a good coach. Amen. Yeah, when he says that. So, uh, so these incidents helped get your attention. Right. And so with that attention, you still have to make a choice. Right. Uh, so take it from there. Well, when I recognized that, it was still actually a couple of years, 
before I got on my knees before the Lord. And honestly, at that time, I didn't, I didn't understand how I was going to get out of the situation that I'd put myself into because I was the, the sole financial support in my family. And uh, I just didn't know how to extract myself from that equation. So mm -hmm. um, that's when uh, I'll just share now uh, the title to uh, this is A Way of Escape. And so the Lord brought to my mind 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able, but will with the temptation provide a way of escape. And that scripture came to me just that clearly as I shared it with you now. And I knew, I didn't even have a Bible in my possession at the time. And I knew that that was God speaking directly to me. Well, did you ever feel like you were the only one? Uh, did you ever have that feeling? Because I did. Uh, at periods in my life thought, I don't know anyone like me. I don't know anyone that's <laughs> struggling with this. I mean, I've got to be the only person in the world that's having this struggle. Yeah, definitely. And then you read that text. Right. No, don't. Yeah, it's common, Don't put right? yourself up on such a that's right. pedestal of evil or whatever. This is common. Yeah. In other words, I can handle that. Right. 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 God says, Present. I can handle that. It's common. I can mm -hmm. handle that. That's a good thing. A another thing you mentioned, it took you a couple of years. Right. That tells me something else about God. <laughs> he's yeah. patient. Yeah, very. And he's persistent. Right. Another strategy to realize that the patience of God in our struggle. Right. And I relate to that too, right. but this is your story. Right. That he patiently, patiently waited. waits and yeah. works. Amen. Yeah, persistently. I had a, a friend of mine whose mother said after I returned to the Lord that um, she said, I knew God was long suffering, but she said, your life brings a whole new dimension <laughs> to that word. So um, yeah. didn't right. really know how to take that at the time, but all glory to God. So would you say that that passage of scripture is one of the ways, uh, profound ways that the Lord used the word? Amen. To, you, to reach you and, and to rescue you. He rescued me through that. And you know, it was, I'll just share, share quickly that, um, again, I didn't know how to get myself out of that situation. And within uh, days of the Lord revealing that scripture to me, um, he revealed to me that my way of escape was to move home and help take care of my elderly grandmother. And I had called uh, an office, because uh, at that time I was a probation and parole officer. I'd gone from social work to probation. And I, I called the office closest to my hometown to see if, if they had any openings. And he said, no, we, we don't. We probably won't have an opening for at least a year. You know, there's someone due to retire in about a year. but." We'll keep you in mind. And I thought, oh, okay, God's going to give me some time to get used to this idea of leaving. Mm -hmm. And it was within days of that conversation, I got a call back and there wasn't one, but three openings. And uh, within two weeks, I, I was moved. Uh -huh. And that's how quickly the Lord kept that promise of that scripture to me. So this was with your grandmother, you said? Mm -hmm. So your family had an impact on this new direction in your life? Definitely. Yeah, my, my parents and uh, sister, cousin, uh, even grandmother had been praying for me for, for many years. Uh, you just keep touching <laughs> on strategies Praise that are Lord. so important. Prayer. Prayer. And, and that's, that is so neat that though you may have not have been praying for yourself, right. someone was interceding for you and praying for you. And that's, that's basically the same experience all of us in Coming Out Ministries share that thing in common. Amen. We were not praying for ourselves, but we <laughs> found out someone else was. And the Lord responded to those prayers. He worked through those prayers and, and He persistently pursued us. It's humbling, he, isn't it? Until He got our attention, Basically. yes. And so now we, um, we appropriate that same strategy as we Amen. now become intercessors for others. Amen. And it's a very powerful, a powerful tool. So how was your experience with God different at this time than it had been before? Well, as I had said before, I was basically going through a good person routine, trying to be good in my own strength. And I didn't know what was going to come of my, you know, surrender. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect if life was going to be a series of gritting my teeth and turning my head or, or what was ahead for me. But it was so different because I, I learned to walk with God and claim His promises. Even 
2 Corinthians 5.17, which says, Therefore, oh. if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Isn't Old things beautiful? are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Just that one scripture really revolutionized my experience. You know, I, I no longer had to go on my feelings, my history, what Satan said about me, but I believe that I was new because that's what God said. Now and I I'm stood on those truths. I'm going to go truths. into a controversial area with you. Uh oh, okay. Okay. Old things are passed away. So you were never tempted again. I was. I was, but those are the times that I claimed God's truth uh -huh. instead of going on my feelings. So what does it mean old things are passed away if you're still tempted? Well, I guess that's the difference between justification and sanctification because we have to work out that, that sanctification part of it in agreement with what God has done, right? So your old behavior has passed away. Yes. But you can't control what Satan does. No, that's right. right. So Satan hasn't passed away. No, no. But your old choices and your old behavior has right. passed away. That's Amen. very, Amen. very important to know that when it says old things have passed away, because many people have asked me, oh, so you were never tempted again? I said, well, I was baptized. Satan wasn't. What do you mean? <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's our old behavior that has passed away, and it's important to know that. Yeah, that part of it really didn't go away for a while for me. It's a and process. I didn't think it ever would, but praise God it has. It is a process. Amen. So when old things pass away, you know, some people die instantly. Some people live a long, <laughs> lingering process to die, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so death can come slowly mm -hmm. or it can be instant. Uh, in my case, it was slow. Mm -hmm. And maybe in your case, it was slow. Death of the old right. man, the old self. Yes. It was a process. Yeah. And, but that, but still God's working, isn't he? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And there was joy and victory and finally peace, which I had never experienced Amen. before. Yeah. I, I, we're running low on time and I want to get to a very important part of your testimony um, about some of the blessings that God has given you that has shocked you. And, and um, I think I know where you're going with this. Share, share with us. Okay. Well, in light of time, uh, there are several things I wanted to share here, but I'll, I'll just focus in on the fact that quickly after I had got on my knees before the Lord, my dad said, well, now we just need to get you married. <laughs> <laughs> I was, honestly, I was so angry. Um, I thought he just doesn't understand. Um, so I never thought that was a possibility. And so it was, it was years later, I'd been walking with the Lord probably about five years at the time. And a uh, young man walked in, into the church one Sabbath, and I thought, wow, he's, he's nice looking. And then I thought, who are you? Like, what? You're, what, are, what? So uh, I was very surprised by that, you know, and that's how the Lord works. He works from the inside out mm -hmm. um, in, in his healing and recreating us. So um, I was surprised by that, but that led me on a journey that ended up in marriage to my husband, and he wasn't that individual. But God used him but as he's a vehicle good to get too, me. Isn't he? Amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I know this is something that we share in common because I mean, within one year after I was back in the faith, Amen. the Lord brought someone into my life, and I was Praise I was married, and so. But does everyone have that same experience? No, no. no. Why not? Well, um, I think we're all individuals for one thing. You know, we all have different journeys, but. You know, it's at the same time, I think that's possible for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's, not, that's not the goal. I say exactly. Je Jesus is, he's the bread of life. He's the living water. He's the main course and he's the dessert. And wow. if he chooses to give us a mate yeah. that we can share all that with, then that's the icing on the cake. And you, you said something important here that I think many people will appreciate. Marriage is not the goal. Right because I, I, I know it was not my goal when I came in. I did say, Lord, would you ever trust me again with family? And I thought, well, of course he's gonna say no because I blew it the first time so badly, but he did. Amen. But, but that's not the goal. Like you say, that, that was something extra special. Right. But you can live a godly life Amen. without being married. There are many heterosexual people that live godly lives Amen. that are not married. That's true. Yeah. So. Um, how long have you been affiliated now? Because we, we met over the phone and, mm -hmm. and you became, um, went through our associate pathway program. How long now 
I think you mentioned it was. I think five it's just years, about five years. About five years now, and I'll tell you, you've been a real blessing to our ministry as a mentoring associate. Uh, it's been a blessing. One to of me. the strategies that you brought into our ministry was about prayer lines. Can you talk a little bit about the special prayer line that you came up with? Well, there had been a prayer line for people that called in to, you know, pray for their loved ones that were were struggling with these issues. Uh, but there wasn't one for those wanting to come out of mm -hmm. that lifestyle. So um, so that was something that, that we've added since I've come on to the ministry. Uh, a prayer line for people who have come out right. of the gay culture. Uh, some of them have not really come all the way out, though, right? They're, they're wanting. Right. Uh, they're, they're, they're contemplating. Right. So it's a prayer line for people who are living the experience. Right, that's right. And the other prayer lines are people for people who are more intercessors. That's right. Correct? Yeah. And you you initiated that and it's been a wonderful blessing to our ministry. Real quickly, can you just share one other strategy, very briefly, another strategy? Well, uh, yeah. I, I would like to just say the to believe has been so important to my experience. Mm -hmm. I can read scripture, but if I don't claim that for myself and really believe that applies to me, then it doesn't have any power in my life. Amen. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, the word believe is in the book of John alone 49 times, and it's repeated throughout God's word. And so I think that is, I mean, Abraham, it, he believed and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Amen. Righteousness by faith is obtained by believing God has done what he has said he has done for us. Right. And it reminds me of what Paul said to the jailer who said, what must I do to be saved? And he said, believe. Amen. But we have to be cautious because James says, well, even the devils believe right. and they tremble. Right. So there's a counterfeit belief or an mm -hmm. insufficient belief. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal savior from sin. Amen. And you shall be saved from Amen. sin. Praise God. Lisa, it's, it's such a joy to have you with us on the, on the set today and Thank to have you. this discussion and share your story and and be sure to tell Troy hello for all of us. Will do. And I'm, I'm sorry that he was unable to be here with us today, but I know he's working and traveling, but you remain to be a very important part of Coming Out Ministries and you have wonderful strategies to share. Thank you Thank so you. much. It's been a blessing. The secret to overcoming sin is helping others to overcome sin. Revelation 12:11 says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, our testimonies are so important. So join us again next time to hear more life-changing testimonies where Jesus offers strategies for strongholds. <laughs>